texts tell us this it's yin and yang good versus evil the darkness versus light light he says or it says or it expresses itself saying i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end the person the last right embodying or embracing the totality of god is going to be the subject today how y'all feeling we almost oh we had a thousand over here could we get a thousand over here we had three uh 334 they, only, they got 35 people over there tap the screen so we get to a thousand and we'll get sorted it's offering time it's offering time hey crystal how you doing today how you doing is that that crystal that emailed me whatever happened with you are you saying crystal that emailed me it ain't never um I ain't never see that you did that call that I sent you if you're the same crystal. I'm not sure. Maybe you're not. Tap the screen like this to get there faster. We have 475. It's offering time. Give as you're receiving. It's offering time. <laughs> it's offering time. We almost there. 563. 563 over there. We almost there. It's offering time. I'm thinking about I'm thinking about the fact that I'm on time. Oh, this old all week I had consultations and stuff. So I wasn't on time. I was late, but I'm on time today. I'm a little early today. Mm -hmm. I'm a little early. We are 745, 766. We almost there. I purchased a plan I can't get in anymore. Did you not save it? After you put in your email, it's prompting you to download or save it. You have up to five times. Every time you click on it after that, it's counting. Instead of saving, you're clicking, so you gotta save. Email me your order number and then I'll resend it. But remember to save it so you could have it because you only get so many clicks. <laughs> Listen, not the same crystal, but I did talk to you and you said that I sounded like a tailor oh i remember you okay <laughs> there's another one see i know a lot of crystals okay <laughs> i remember no problem Dawn. so email me your order number so we can get that um situated so you can get yours we had a thousand yet let's see oh yeah good perfect 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 i remember you so i'm gonna start this off when we talk about i'm going keep in mind i'm going somewhere here with this here and this is going to be really, really, I'm breaking this down for you so you can really, really understand it in daily life, you know, apply it to your right now reality, right? And this is called embracing the totality of God. And break, you're welcome, babe. Embracing the totality of God. So embracing the totality of God, we have to understand even in relationships. And we're going to talk a little bit about relationships today too. In relationships, we got to understand the totality of God. Your good versus evil, your yin and your yang. Even though you are a woman... You possess feminine and masculine energy. Even though you are a man, you possess feminine and masculine energy. Yin and yang. There's a law of gender that says there must be male and there must be female principles, right? <laughs> so it don't matter if it's two men in a relationship. It don't matter if it's two women in a relationship. There must be male and there must be female principles. And this helps you in your relationships when you can embrace the totality of god within for your partner because your partner is really loving you based upon the way that you know how to love you right you'll see this in relationships as it pertains to how they say men like bees right it's not that the, he likes somebody that's going to be mean to him but he likes somebody that knows that how to be feminine and say oh yes thank you darling da 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 da, -da. could you could you help me with that? Oh, I feel da da da. But then know how to tell him, look, don't play with me. Like, you know, jump into to masculine or know when if he's away that she knows how to take care of home, right? That's showing that she has both yin and yang energy, her darkness versus light, right? But I'm gonna share this. The other day, the other day I was outside, and I don't know if those if you, all of y'all was here the other day. We were talking about health and wellness that day. And um, the funny is, the color is disordered on this here side. That's an old phone. That ain't my color over there. I just thought I'd say that because I don't like that color and I can't get the color to go away. It's an old phone, so the pixels ain't, ain't pretty. <laughs> anyway, so the other day I was outside. I was outside and a fly was buzzing around me. And I know 
I study these little dainty little insects. I know that they secrete, you know, when they land, and I don't like flies touching me. If they were to touch, if I'm outside, would happen to be eating, if they touch any part of the blade or whatever, I would throw it away because I don't like flies. They're grotesque to me, right? So, <laughs> this is part of embracing the totality of God. It's a simple story. So the fly, knowing, I guess, energetically, feeling, because life happens through us, we're the operant power when we're God in physical form. The fly and my energy is not coinciding. I'm creating resistance for the fly to go away. And so the fly graces me with his presence and annoys the crap out of me. So much so that the fly passed by my eyelash, touched my eyelash, and I felt like my eyeball was just gross, like, right? <laughs> I felt like I was gross in that moment. And I was so mad, I ain't gonna lie, I was so mad. I was like, why? Because in my mind, I was like, don't you touch me. Get away from me. Go away from me, don't you? Don't come by me. And he was just a bosom. <laughs> so he, he graced my eyelash and I'm sitting up there saying, oh my God, I just feel the little particles of shit on my eyelash. I'm gonna just go inside and just just rinse my eyelash and then I'm gonna just cut them off. I know how to grow hair. I could grow eyelashes back. I'm gonna put some of my be longer product on my eyelash. My eyelash gonna be back. All right. <laughs> Government mechanical insects. <laughs> so I went inside. I washed my face and I'm mad. Like, right. I'm so livid that it touched me. I go back outside and I was like, oh no. Oh no. Oh, you die in a day. Y'all ever seen that movie, um, Taken? Hey, Miss Being So, you ever seen that movie Taken with the man with his daughter that was taken? This is how I felt. He said in the movie when he was talking to the killer, or he had the killer on the phone, the kidnapper rather, on the phone. He is like, I will find you and I will kill you. <laughs> that was how I was feeling, right? I remember that. You embraced him now, right? Yeah, yeah. So... I'm standing out there. I didn't tell this part of the story, Miss Grateful. I was standing out there and I was like, you know what? You're going to die today, baby. You go die today. So I got my little plug in, the little zapper thingy, you know, that'll kill the fly if it goes, you know, near it. But I'm sitting up there playing the role of Mr. Miyagi, trying to calm my heart rate down trying to calm my body down so the fly could now know that there is no resistance. Come hither so I could just smack your ass. You'd already, you'd already landed on my eyeball and I feel grotesque. I feel like the little poop particles in my eyeball. So I'll just smack you. I gotta clean my eyes so I just clean my hands of your poop particles once I smack you and in you because I will find you and I will kill you. <laughs> the totality of God, like, right? I come, I'm taking little deep breaths. I'm acting like I'm me um, meditating, like, right? So he could come close. I'm pretending that I'm a whole wall so he could come over there by me. I done got the zapper because I, I, I'm i even applying the biblical text to it because it's like where two or three are joined together, I'll be God in the midst. I needed somebody on the, some energy on the same accord with me. So the zapper right there with me, ready to zap it. So I miss me and the zapper, right? And I'm, I'm real calm and I'm following the fly. I'm calming my heart. And I'm thinking, this is the end for you, fly. I told you to stay away. So when I kill you, I want you to go. This is my dark side, y'all. I'm sharing my dark side. I want you to go and tell the others. God gives life and God take it away. And just then, as I had calmed my heart and I had calmed my breath and I became one with this fly, I heard, zzz. I was like, oh, the buzzer got him first. Immediately for the first, for about five seconds, I was like, God darn it, I wanted, I just wanted to just smack his ass. But the, the zapper did it for me. And I released the energy and I was like, oh well, to live is to die. My work is done. I went inside and I washed my face. This is me against a fly now, right? 
I went inside and I washed my face with all kind of stuff because I really felt grotesque to my eyeball. I put oil on it, the highly beneficial oil on my eyeball and everything. So my eyeball, rinse my eyeball, get everything to my eyeball. I decided not to cut my eyelashes off because after I had to did all of that, my eye felt like I had a new eye and this here eye felt like it was the old eye. So I, I started to feel better about the whole thing, right? <laughs> but here I am thinking about the fact that I sit out there and I have birds who love me, who walk up to me and I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I hope none of the birds don't saw me in that moment. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm so loving to the birds and then I hear I am with the fly and I'm ready to kill you to the bud. Embracing the totality of God. And I ended up telling you all about that story and I told somebody else about the story and here, here, this somebody else that I told about the story ordered something for me that I want to share with y'all. I told them about the story and they ordered this here for me. <laughs> I had never seen nothing like this in my life before. Do you see this? The words might be backwards, but so I'm going to read what it says. It says, bug assault bug assault it is a <laughs> it is a passion assassin you can put salt inside of this little thing right you put salt in it and you sit there and you point it toward a fly <laughs> you point it toward a fly it says fire your fly swatter it says no battery required Use ordinary table salt, pop up sight indicator, optimal push safety, deadly accurate, <laughs> deadly accurate sight for my fly. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I laughed at it. But I was like, this is really, really cool. And I'm imagining, oh, and it also says for adults only. This is really cool. Do not, do not shoot in face or eyes. I said, this is really, really cool An aspect of me that was out there wanting to kill this fly. The darker side of me really likes this little tool. But then the light side of me, it's like, oh, but I really just want to sit outside and, you know, feed the hummingbirds and the little morning doves. And I don't want them to see me with this ear in my head. But secretly, I really want to shoot some flies because I don't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't like flies. Darkness versus light. You have it. You can sit there and judge me about this here. Color is safe too. Yeah, the color is safe. This is a, a pink color. Love. Look, look. Pink representing love. Black representing that darkness. <laughs> Where did you find them? I, I have no idea. On Amazon? I didn't buy it. Somebody bought it for me. So the point here is embracing the totality of God. God gives life, God take it away. Some of you, some of us, even me in my life, in my past, I, in coming up in church, church people per se, they like to embrace the totality of God as being love and light. You know, I don't want to be a sinner. And oh, no, I have to love my enemies. But here's the thing, the real sin is when you get out of alignment and you don't feel good about yourself. The real sin is when you feeling out of alignment with what yourself, your inner being is saying to do. In that moment, I knew within myself, my inner being was saying, we want to end this fly because we don't like flies. So I set myself out there and I break, embrace that moment that's me too. That represents me too. And so people are called this in spirituality. They'll call this his side, the person that wanted to kill a fly. They'll call this side shadow work. They, they'll, they'll hide that side. They wouldn't come on no live and tell you that they were out there trying to kill a fly mentally, using mindfulness to bring the fly so they could zap them. They'll be like, oh, the fly has purpose and all is God. Because they too, just like the church folk, want to stay on one side of God. And then they'll express the other side of God as, oh, that was the devil. The devil made her kill the fly. No, 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 that was me. 
I'm not going to say that was the devil. That was me. Because, see, we both have this yin and yang. And in, 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 in on TV, they will have a little angel on this here side and a little devil on this here side. Yeah. And some people don't want to embrace. But I want to remind you that that's part of the game of life that you signed up for, too. To embrace the totality of God. Not just one side of God. Church will have you on one side, and this is why you end up hooked up with Reverend Lowdown when you ain't have no sex in a while, and you want to embrace one side of God. Yeah, you want to embrace one side of God, and, and you ain't had sex in a while, and oh my God, now that Reverend Lowdown is really looking delicious on the, on the pulpit, because what you're doing is creating resistance with some a natural God-given force of you feeling aroused or being horny in that moment. You're creating resistance. You're like, no, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to stop this energy. I don't want to embrace my shadow side of myself. No, 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 no. That's the devil. The devil making me think about him. The devil. So they'll conjure. Here is energy. I'm teaching you energy, how it works. They conjure up so much your resistance by holding on to this energy. No. No, we got to wait till the husband come. No, the devil, I'm going to rebuke the devil. No. And so now this idea of being the virtuous woman, the energy here is weak. And so now the thoughts and the temptations of being with Reverend Lowdown gets higher. This energy gets higher because this is the one that you created most resistance with. So this energy lose. And lo and behold, now you the person that is left in the church with Reverend Lowdown, like, right? And you will say, the devil made you do it. No, you made you do it because you created resistance. You conjured up that energy. You didn't allow your shadow side to come forth. I'm not saying sleep with Reverend Lowdown. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying being okay with the fact that, yeah, I felt some kind of way in that moment. And I'm okay with that. Some, t some people have, even, even in this false sense of being woke, some people want to want to be like, they're always in the vortex. Yeah, everything is so beautiful. I'm just like the blessed and highly favored people in church. They have the spiritual ones that's, yeah, everything's perfect, my God. But they're fighting wars inside, all because they don't want to embrace the totality of God and sit in milk in the moment that don't feel too heavenly and be like, yeah, I'm here. I'm here, yeah, yeah, I, I, I wanna, I, I feel a little like giving up in this moment. Just like yesterday, I, I talked so much on, on consultations and, and I just got tired of talking and I was late to come to this live and I told y'all, I was like, y'all, I just got tired of talking and I just had to shut up. I was there in that moment and I accepted that moment for what it was. It was a moment when I needed to get back in alignment with my inner being, my be inner being was saying, okay, you feel tired. So if you feel tired, that means you're not in alignment. Come on back and get in alignment over here and do what's in this moment, what feels good to you to get there. And so embracing the totality of God trinkles over to some of our relationships. Being the nice girl. Yeah, being the nice girl all the time. Oh, honey, could I rub your feet? Could I, could I do anything? Could I slap on your knob? Could I... Could I massage you? Could I do this and that and the third for you? Because I want to make you happy. It don't have to be a woman doing this to a man. It could be a man doing this to a woman. I'm talking both genders embracing the totality of God. Because what it is that people fall in love with is the fact that you know how to love you. The way that you treat you. The ability for you to put yourself first. And then give them your overflow. But when you begin to do, do, do. And stay on one side of God. When God is both yin and yang. When God knows how to be soft and hard. The darkness and the light. But when you stay on one side. You're not allowing people to see how beautiful you are. You're not allowing. Yeah. That, yeah. Nice. For what? For what? Because you have all of these spectrums of light to express yourself in. And I know what we've been taught that nice matters. No, we don't. Feeling worthy matters more than nice matters. The signal of I am worthy. Dad to take you farther energetic than 
I'm being nice because nice matters. Because guess what? Nice could actually attract a narcissistic person in your life. Life's, life's nice could actually attract those that are coming to take from you because you got a whole bunch of nice to give. But worthy, worthy attracts those that will give to you because you already feeling like you're worthy. Then here, here goes some more. The blessings of God are yay and amen according to how you feel. If you're walking around here feeling nice, baby. They got a whole lot of white, nice people that have um, wet asses and dry purses. They got a whole bunch of nice people that get manipulated. They got a whole bunch of nice people that get molested, assaulted, lied on, cheated on, all because they were nice, all because they were not embodying the totality of God here. The yin and the yang. The darkness versus the light. This is why they have a whole book. They It's called Men Like Bees. Men Like Bees. Do men just like bees because they want somebody to treat them bad all the time? It's something about that bee, though. It's something about the bee. The bee, the bee knows how to jump into feminine, and then the bee know how to say, "Well, hold up, hold up. You ain't gonna treat me no any kind of way." And the bee means it, though. And so men like that, just like women like that too. You know, they'll they'll like that that guy with the Tims and the T-shirt on or whatever. But the oh, don't let him be having the Tim T-shirt and he got money and he coming over there to give you something. He got some roses or something. He's embodying the totality of God. He's a little rough and he's a little soft. So my point to you, do you is do you embrace the totality of God in your life as it pertains to your relationships? as it pertains to your friendships, because friendships, relationships, any type of ship supposed to be going somewhere and it needs to be balanced, balance your ship with the totality of God. Your light versus your darkness, your yin versus your yang. These are the healthy relationships with the people that you can tell where to get off at. Any woman or any man, if you have a woman in your life or a man in your life, that you don't really like you don't really you can put them secretly in maybe the relation or in the friendship category and sometimes you talk to them as a friend sometimes you don't want to be bothered with them sometimes you don't even answer them meanwhile be simply because you don't even realize you're doing this meanwhile that person based upon psychology is getting more and more fond of you Oh my God, I wonder what she's doing. I wonder if she's out with somebody else. Yesterday she talked to me, today she ain't talking to me. What is this? She's embodying the totality of God. Everybody loves God. <laughs> Everybody loves God. The totality of God, a balanced God. The, the woman that knows how maybe to, to look dainty one day and then the next day she know how to look the part to go to a basketball game. The totality of God is in the physical. The totality of God could be even in your spoken word. The woman who knows how to sexually seduce him and talk to him ever so gently and express, oh, I feel so safe around you. But yet that same woman that knows how to, to strengthen her voice and be like, no, I'm not going to let you talk to me like that good day and said healthy boundaries the totality of God the totality of God even with her heart to give her love but only give her overflow she's not foolish with her love because she's embodying the totality of God to give love and she know when to take that thing away and make you feel like you the prodigal son and you didn't went too far away from the bosom of God the totality of God, embracing the totality of God. There is nothing wrong with embracing the totality of God because you're in physical form experiencing God's self. Some of you follow me and listen to me because you are maybe on a sick frequency. Maybe 
maybe you on a yearning of a consciousness journey but that's still embodying the totality of god sickness is one frequency of god and you're embodying it you're embracing it because you're listening to me talking about eating right for the blood type so now you getting over here you learning information so you can go over here and embrace this here part of god so you can put these two together and say oh okay through the game of life i now know the totality of god as it pertains to health and sickness the totality of God. That's all we, we learn in how to do. And relationships is so very important that you embrace your totality of your God self. If not, you'll be good for nothing but to be trampled over by men or women because you don't know how to express the totality of God. God is in everything, y'all. If you would not, if you could, if you could see it, if you could hear it, if you could taste it, if you could smell it, smell it it's God energetically vibrating at a different frequency so my point here the message today is are you embracing the totality of god in your life are you being easy with yourself easily able to express yourself are you so afraid to express yourself of something else versus just being love and light you are you afraid of your darkness are you afraid of your opposite of your shadow self because see what happens if you're afraid with your of your shadow self what happens is that 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 that, that movie that movie us the doppelgangers that movie if you saw that movie did anybody see that movie that's a perfect example of what i'm talking about the shadow self was underground for so long and it's going to become one moment in your life that if you don't embrace the totality of god within you that that shadow self is going to come up and it's going to go to war with you. It's going to fight with you. You're going to see the reflection of yourself. And some people ain't going to be able to handle the reflection of their self. Some people ain't going to be able to handle it. And they're going to have to die. <laughs> It'll be interesting if, if you spend all this time being the love and light version of self. And you never explored your dark side to heal that side, to become one with that side. It'll be very interesting if your darkness come from underneath ground and murder your ass. <laughs> because you done gave them so much power underneath there. Because trust and believe those things that you're not letting come to surface, they're growing because you're creating resistance with them. You're not purging and letting that stuff come up so if you can work on and handle that. You're not opening up the door to the skeletons in your closet. That way the skeletons are growing and you're trying to shut the door. But now the door can't close no more. Because the skeletons have got bigger. Based upon your fear. Your worry. Your, your worry of other people seeing the other side of you. The whole time you haven't even seen the other side of you either. You haven't worked on you. And so this, 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 this is the ultimate reason why people wobble as far as manifestation is concerned, because you don't even know yourself. Mm -mm. You come on TikTok and maybe you have a little sh channel on TikTok where you have to be this certain way all of the time. Because you want to, you want, because I understand, I come from corporate America. Perception. And speaking of those people in corporate America, they go to work and they put on a little dress and they put on a little suit and they're lying. It's okay to lie every now and then. This is a game of life. But it comes really, really bad when you are lying to yourself and now you don't forgot who the hell you are. Wait, am I pretending? Do I re am I really invested in this company like this? Here? You go home and you, you question yourself because now you don't even know who you are because you've been lying. Same way. You lie in the church. Because you, you, you think that you just, you got to be this angel all the time. You lie in corporate America because you want to make sure that everybody thinks perception-wise that you're a team player. You lie energetically because you're playing the game of life. You keep lying and lying and lying all because you don't want to embrace the totality of God within you. And you don't even know who you are. You, you, you don't. And so in relationships, your relationships suffer. Your relationship suffer when you don't know who you are because if you don't know who you are and you have a set with yourself and ask your question, yourself a question like, do I want to do masculine energy all the time or do I want to do feminine? 
don't want a man that, or a woman, you know, that's a woman that's feminine and, 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 and knows how to have fun. Or do I just want somebody that's just going to be a housewife and just, you know, maybe she's going to have those momo looking days. I just want a caregiver. Or do I want the feminine? Do I want a man that's going to provide for me? Or do I want to just, you know, be independent and I got mine and maybe he'll give me here and there? Yeah. See, when you don't know yourself, you wobbling. When you ain't ever experienced the totality of yourself, it suffers. It makes you suffer in your relationships too. Because energetically, your signal is wobbling. So you're getting all kind of stuff that you really don't even know if you want. And you're rejecting everything. So your subconscious mind and your inner being is saying, well, what is it? What is it? Because you're not protecting or embracing the totality of God within. So how do you fix this? You got to know what you want. You got to sit with yourself and you got to ask yourself, what is it that I desire? What? Who am I? Am I a dainty person in the relationship? Because understand this one thing about yourself in relationships. The most important thing you need to know about yourself in a relationship is the role that you want to play in the game of life in your relationship. If you want to play the role as the masculine in the relationship and you don't want to play the game and be dainty. And you want to have, I'm talking about the women right in this moment. And you want to be this independent woman. And you want to have your own and all this and that and the third. Understand that you're the man in the relationship. So if you're the man in the relationship, when the, when your subconscious mind creates ways for you to run into whole, all kind of males that are B-I-T-C-H's, you can't complain because you are the woman. Going back to the law of gender, that there must be male and there must be female principle. A double mind man is unstable in all his ways. And, and don't expect anything to receive nothing from God. Right, Miss Brenda? Right. When you wobbling like that. Yeah. Thank you all for tapping the screen. I appreciate you too. Thank you, Miss Being So when you wobbling like that, that's sending out a signal that you don't know what you want. You don't know because you don't know yourself. You don't know the totality of God within yourself. This is what we were talking about yesterday about the people that's complaining about, you know, you know what, what ain't working and that we, on my on my comment section just this just, just triggered, triggered, triggered by me. By me. I say something and I trigger people. But I only trigger those people that got a little bruise up in here. The other people, they just like it or they just keep on going. But the ones that got a little bruise up in here. But for those people that got get their little triggers, they don't want to sit with self and figure out, why am I commenting on this lady post here? Why? Why am I commenting on this lady post? What is it inside of me? Why? Oh... Is it because I suffer with sickness? Oh, because she had said something about wearing glasses and and I got glasses on and I, I guess that means what she's saying might apply to me. No, that don't apply to me. So I'm gonna attack her. Cause now she the problem. Can't be me. Oh, because you don't wanna embrace the totality of God. Your dark side and your light. Because life happens through us, not to us. Through us. Yesterday, yesterday evening, I went out to this, this this place by myself. I just wanted to take a ride by myself. And the only negative I could say about being in Arizona where I always talk to you all and tell you that it's heaven on earth. That they got, I, I, don't, I don't want this to be misconstrued. They got, um, I'm picking my words wisely. They got some entitled people here, right? They got some nice little neighborhoods out here where the little entitled people are, right? And I frequent the entitled people community, right? Well, I'm a, I look like this here in the entitled people community. I'll say it like that. And so when you're dealing with entitled people, you know, I'm from New Orleans and I see these entitled people and the way that they drive. The, the thing I can say is that they just like, it's almost like they're little children. They catch little temper tantrums. You can't get in front of them. They're wild out on the road. And the people out here, they literally die from car accidents. I mean, cars just flip. Cause some, all because somebody got in front of the entitled person. All because the entitled person wanted to be first at the red light. And it's not that serious to me. Right? 
But I went out there to this entitled deeper into the entitled entitled people community to go get something yesterday. And I tried to get over and an entitled person didn't want me to get over. It, it, it didn't bother me. I, I just get out of the way. Look, go ahead on. You need a lollipop with that? Go ahead on. Get up out of my way. Because I, I want to get there safe. I'm not about to do all of that on the road. It ain't that serious. I'm retired. I don't I don't even know what time it is. I don't even know what day of the weekend it is. I ain't in no kind of rush to entitle people, right? Then, because I paid attention and I was going in the same path with this person, I gave attention to this person on this long road that I was on. And the person I saw when the person left, and I was I felt happy that they were away from me because I didn't want the entitled person to try to do nothing to them because I gave energy for that another entitled person I met when I turned and an entitled person that don't want you to get over you just you just just stay everywhere right but when but here's the thing when you give energy to this here stuff that don't be serving you I understand that it grows and it grows and grows. Now I could sit here and say, I can sit here and say and complain and make this energy grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And what will happen is every time I get in the car, every time I get in the car, I'm gonna run into that entitledness. But the best thing, this is what being not being a victim in situations and being accountable with, with, when, when it's an issue that you keep attracting to you because I, if I'm accountable, I attracted that to me because I spent so much time sitting there looking at them people saying, your ass is crazy in my mind and my habitual thinking. I wish you'd get away from me is what I was thinking. And I attracted more of it. If I be accountable with myself and go in myself and, and sit with myself, even though they have people out there, I could, re I could manipulate that so it could stop happening right there. But there's a part of me that sat with that and attracted it again. That's what being accountable, that's what shadow work is all about. That, that's what centering yourself and embodying the totality of God. Okay, I was just minding my business. I let the first one go, but then at the second one, I kind of like jumped into that mode of, look, I want y'all people to get away from me. And then I was creating this thing. See, we create. We create from our darkness, just like we create from our light. Now on the way back, now that was two going, two that I, I, I picked up going. And when I got to where I was going and I, I sat there in the parking lot and I'm just looking around cause I like the people watch and, I, and I'm just looking around and I'm just looking and now instead of people watching, I'm looking at the road. And I'm like, look, look at this, look at this, look at look, I ain't even driving, look at, look at this, look at this. I'm giving my attention to this. I'm playing the road. I'm showing you where I was attracting. So on the way back, I got one more for the road. Entitled person. I'm talking about just swerving over trying to get in your lane see we create from our negative thinking and i know this i teach this and i i was playing the game of life and forgot to switch over that thought because you can get so far into the thought or into your darkness that you gotta somebody gotta call you and snatch you out so i got a phone call on my way home on the third time i got a phone call and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you called me. I feel so happy you called me because my mind, these people were driving crazy and my mind was just like so focused. And in this phone call, the phone ringing just got me out of me. My whole time I was just so thinking about all oh, how these crazy people were driving and stuff. And I'm happy because it snapped me out of it and it got me focused because I need to clear this energy and I just need to go home. And I just need to center myself and deal with myself. See, this I'm teaching you the game, baby, of how you deal with yourself. Because none of you all are perfect, nor am I. I, we, I say I am perfection because I am in the perfect place for the perfect thing right now. And I'm perfectly in alignment with my inner being. But what I'm saying is it, as, it, as it attains to being in alignment, there's no such thing as perfect all the time because you're going to get in and out. Those thoughts are never going to go away from you. You're going to always have to sift through them thoughts. Do I want to entertain this thought? Do I want to go down this, 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 this rabbit hole with this thought? And so this thought might not seem like the best thought in that moment as it pertains to what your inner being is thinking. 
So what I say is that at that moment, it might not be as perfect as what my inner being is saying. But I do. I do go down that rabbit hole sometimes. And I know you do too. Here's the thing. Know that the rabbit hole exists for you to go down the negative spiral. Don't beat yourself up when you go down the negative negative spiral, but know how to get back out of that negative spiral and get back in alignment with your inner being. Because if you ever had an experience with source energy, you will never be the same again. You will never mistake this energy, this this vortex, this 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 feeling, this knowing, this alignment. You'll never mistake it. You always know how to get back home to it because it feels like home. And so you know when you're in your dark place, you know that when you're embodying the negative side of you, the negative polarity of God, what you gotta do to get back to source. This is embodying the totality of God for your everyday life, for relationships, for your mindset, for mentalism, for financial gain, for health and wellness, even if you were, even if this was a sick story, if you're feeling the sickness, it's okay that you had the thought that, okay, this might be the in oil, in all for all things for me. But you know how to get up out of there. And say this too shall pass. You're just embodying the totality of God. Cause God can be that sickness, but God is very well, that health and wellness too. Know when you're in there, know how to get out of there. And people are going to love and respect you. Just on TikTok and on social media platforms, the people that get, get people to view them or, or comment, they love the fact that the people be so real. The people that like me in my physical reality, they love the fact that I am so real, that I can speak knowledge to them, that I can be conscious with them, and then I can be goofy and silly with them. That I could, I could, I could, I can embody my darkness and I will literally say, I know I'm not in alignment right now. I know that you can't, I know I'm not in alignment right now, but I'm going to sit up in this here right now for this very moment. And I'm about to be the darkness. I know. I'll get back in when I get good and ready because it's okay to embody your darkness. Just like it's okay to embody your light. And so we have people in religion that will judge. But oh, judge not, at least you judge. And it's the same people that will judge you when you are in your darkness. Are the same people that are hard on themselves. And that have a whole gang of skeletons in their closet. That's why they're judging you. That's why they judge others because they have these skeletons in their closet and they and they, they don't want nobody to see theirs. So they'll talk about you. Hey, um, I noticed you got da 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 da. Meanwhile, they they holding on to the door in their closet. Because life happens through you, not to you. If you could see the speck in everybody else's eye, then surely you got one of yours. So it's very, very important on this journey when I when and I'm telling you and it's a plus to help because remember I was telling you that I had the you know I wore the glasses and I, I had the, the 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 thyroid issues and overweight and all of this I embody death remember that story I just surrendered to it all and told my babies love each other be there for each other this was my thing that I told them every night before I went to sleep because I thought my days were so numbered and so short. And I prayed and I said to live is to die. Because I thought I was dying. And so what I was doing in that moment, I was embodying death. I was releasing the resistance with death. I was surrendering that, that's part of me too. I'm living and so I must one day die. Here I go. I'm gonna go to sleep. You could just take me in my sleep, death. You think sometimes that if you embody that thing, if you release resistance in that area, just to milk that moment, just to see how that experience, you think, like for me, you would think, oh, you're saying okay to death. Don't do that. You're going to die. No, that, that ain't what happens. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. That, actually, actually, that's going to help you get on the other side quicker and easier. You just release resistance. That's what you did. That's what I did. 
I was saying hello. Okay, meet me up, Scotty. Look, I, I'm, I'm about to tap out. Y'all take care of each other. I love you. Gave you everything. I'm going to leave everything for you, baby. Y'all be there for each other. I said this to my boys. And every day, I got more strength. Till I realized I ain't going nowhere. All because I was able to embody the totality of my other side of myself instead of having fear for it. I release all resistance. Yeah. The legendary done. Yeah. Done, done. This is so important for your manifestation, for your relationships. Men and women want to see your totality of God. You know how they call them men the simps? The simp is, could be very well a man that give a woman every day. And some women don't even be wanting in certain phases of their life these so-called simps because they only show them one side. They have on the flip of that, I could flip that for you. Some women <clears throat> don't want one moment. Some women don't want an all rough masculine man. They don't. Because he don't embrace the totality of God. Anytime you just have a one-sided person, they're not embracing the totality of God. Whether they are all masculine or all feminine, it does not matter. Even for these women that are on this feminine train, that want to have the nails and that want to look dainty, want to wear the makeup and want to look feminine. There are some men that get born with just a feminine aspect and they want fun. They want the other side. They want the feminine woman to have some boundaries and not sit there and be easily manipulated just because that man has money. No, no, no. They want the other side. I heard Beyonce singing a song. She was like, she was nothing like me. Some, I don't know. She must have a new cheating song or something coming out. And she was on a TikTok thing. And she was like, she was nothing, nothing like me. The total opposite of me. And, and I'm thinking to myself, of course. <laughs> of course. And she was giving it all her soul to sing this song. Of course she was opposite of you. The part of you that you don't come out. Let, let come out and play. Of course, the man or the woman wants the opposite of you. But if you put yourself together and balance yourself, the totality of God, they'll have it already. <laughs> it's like that BA got nothing on me. Of course not. That's who you that's who you manifested to come for. That's who in your closet that you'd engage so much of resistance to. The woman that's opposite from you, she in your closet. And because you hiding her in your closet and you not expressing her and you're you're shutting the door to her and you're hoping hoping that nobody sees her, guess what you manifesting? Your man to meet her. <laughs> All because you ain't embodying the totality of God. Cause you're not. You don't want your man to see that part of you. So you hide it in your closet. And what's done in the darkness got to come to light. Your greatest fear, just like Job said in the biblical text, that which I have feared the most has come upon me. And so in relationships, as I deal with consultations and people that are in broken relationships, they'll be like, I knew. I knew he or she would cheat on me. I'm like, oh, oh, you know. Peep your words. Peep the word. I knew. How did you know, God? At least you manifested that day. Yeah. Shut the closet door. At least you manifested. What you mean you know? You mean you've been thinking about it, huh? Hey, 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 Monique. You, 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 you mean, you mean you've been thinking about it and you thought about it so much and you hid it in the closet so much that the energy just conjured up and then all of a sudden, Bam, instant manifestation. You got in alignment. The energy got so big that you manifested that thing in physical form. All because you didn't want to embrace the totality of God. You had a little bit of your God in the closet and a little bit out of the closet. And you wanted everybody to see what was out of the closet. And you never did your shadow work. And guess what? The shadow came out of the closet and it represented the totality of you that you didn't want to embrace. And your guy friend liked Or your girlfriend liked it. She liked it. 
It is so important that you express yourself, your yin and your yang, your darkness versus light. And it, and it goes about the, the delivery. You could say anything to anybody. It's how you deliver the message here. Yeah? It's how you deliver the message. You can say, you can say, get the F out of my face in the masculine energy, like, right? But you could say, um, you know, I feel like some quiet time, so I'm going to leave now. No matter what, guess what you say? That you don't want to be bothered with that person. That's expressing the totality of your, your God self. I'm not saying be rude and ugly with your reflections. Know how to effectively communicate, but know how to speak from the abundance of your heart so your inner being, your darkest part within yourself can come to light and express itself. See, a lot of people that I consult with have left behind in that closet that I'm talking about. They left behind a little girl or a little boy that never felt heard, that never had a chance to express itself. Never felt loved, never felt worthy, never felt accepted in some kind of way. And so now they're an adult, an adult with a little girl in the closet behind them. And they're trying to be all professional, like they got life figured out because now they're, you know, over 25 or whatever years old. But they never dealt with their shadow self. And oftentimes, they'll, even in corporate America, I, I have girlfriends, so, you know, they could deliver a beautiful presentation in front of the CEO, financial aspects, the charts and everything, and, and you know, the sounds and stuff flying in, the clip art flying in and everything. Well, they don't know how to talk to people outside of a meeting. They get sweaty and bothered. You know, they, 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 they got the corporate America smarts, but street smarts, game smarts, and none of that they have because they never embrace that side of themselves. Get to know yourself. And getting to know yourself, you're awesome. <laughs> That's truly me, but not anymore. That was you? Okay, good for you, baby. I'm happy for you. Get to know yourself. And getting to know yourself is getting to know God. It's funny that I don't talk about these here kind of relationship stuff on live, but I actually have, I consult with people and I teach them actually the art of seduction, actually how to play the game, you know, and, and ain't nothing wrong with that. I tell them and they like, I'm green when it comes to that. I was like, well, don't you tell nobody else. Don't tell the man that you're green <laughs> because, because men easily know how to play the game of life. They, they know. They know how easily to manipulate energy. They learn from the master of them all, watching their mother. They know how to manipulate easily the women in the, in the simulated environment. They know how to chime in on them emotions. They know how to tell women the sweetest things that, that they ever heard. But then, but they also know that they are men and that they, 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 they normally show. Masculine energy is about showing and doing and proving. It ain't about talking and feeling. That's that's more like the feminine. The feminine is just just talk and feel and flow and receive. But they'll get a woman hooked just by words, by words, because they know how to play the game of life. They're playing the game of life. They know how to play the game. They're letting their men men know how to do this. They let their shadow side out to play. Women. Oh, no, because I want to do da 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 da, -da. I got to be the nice girl and, and virtuous woman and nothing else. And then, then you'll find these women, and there's nothing wrong with being this here way if this is truly who you want to express all of your days. But there's a time and a season for all things under the sun. I'm telling you this because if you pay attention how, how, how it goes in life, there are people that go through phases. You could go through a phase where you want a child and then you don't want a child no more. You could go to a phase where, where you, you're married and you think you wanted to be married, but then you don't want to be married no more. You could think, you think, you think you want this, 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 this guy that you got to be a team builder with. And then that get a little old, you know, humans go through phases in life. You know, I don't, then you get to a place, I don't want to build nobody. I don't want to build nothing no more. I'm tired of this building stuff. But then, then it'd be so late, you didn't, ha you didn't have your skeletons in the closet, your shadow self in the closet for so long. So really all you have done is, is smothered or buried your shadow self in that closet for so long. 
Now you want to change the game for somebody that only sees you as this person. They don't know who your shadow is. Now it's kind of hard to open up your closet and be like, oh, oh, I come with this here too. 20 years later. Because the people now, it's hard for them to embrace the change of you, who you are. That's why I say now in your now in this state of being. Embrace the totality of who you are. Who you are. Speak your truth. Communicate your truth in the best way possible, in the most feminine way possible, but live your best life and let all your skeletons come out to purge themselves. Experience yourself. This is this is a game of life and you can't get it wrong. You always growing and learning. You always, and I'll tell you a true story about me. I was an introvert for so long. In the beginning of my journey, I was so nervous about, you know, relationship. You know, back in the day, my mama didn't even have, let me have a boyfriend, like, right? When I didn't have a boyfriend, I couldn't go certain places, whatever. My mom, she's a minister, and she was really over, over protective with me. I was a baby. And so, I was an introvert, and as I was growing, <laughs> I realized that I didn't know how to talk. I was so shy. I would get so nervous when, when men would approach me, and I, 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 I didn't know who I was. So what I did was, back in the day, they had this this, this website called blackpeoplemeet.com. I got on the website and I put my picture there, you know. You know, a lot of men would talk to me and I played the role behind, you know, some like some of the little, pe the little trolls do. I played behind the computer. I played different roles, where I was a nice girl, where I was a nerdy girl, where I was a little seductive lady, where I was just active, where I was, just, you know. It was all kinds of different roles for different people, whatever I wanted to play. And I did that in order to boost my confidence to see who I really was. What what one of these versions of myself do I really want to express as it pertains to relationship? This is part of getting to know yourself. Yeah, you put yourself out there, you see see who 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 the who you heck you are, what you resonate with, you ask yourself questions, you see how it feels. And so when I, I got to a point where I graduated seemingly from doing that, and I was just like really, really cold lady, like, right? And so, and then, so I graduated from being behind the computer. So now I'm, I'm confident. Now it, it helped with my self-concept. It helped with my confidence. So now when I go, went to the grocery store, this was years ago, when I used to go to the grocery store, I don't do this no more. When I used to go to the grocery store, I would go to the grocery store and I'll, yeah, I'll try to play like I was flirting. Like, not to get nobody number, but I just wanted to see if I had the balls to do it, to, to be feminine, to be dainty. I would start small talk with people. I would just joke with people. I would do whatever to men. I would do whatever I felt in that moment of time and space that would get me out of my comfort zone just to see who I was and what I was capable of. Just to see if I can release this part of me that's so nervous. I wouldn't embrace that side of me that I was afraid to embrace because I feel like on that other side of that fear is going to be the best moments of my life. And surely enough it was because it opened up doors for me. To get in a position in life where I could talk now to anybody about anything. Anybody. Anybody. I don't care who you are. I've sat in rooms on panels with celebrities and I, I tell them, you know, talk to them just like I would talk to an average Joe. Look, look, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I saw you moving. But anyway, this here and this, this, this. Yeah, because I now understand, know how to talk. Effectively speak my peace and my truth. I now have let that little girl that was in that closet that was scared to talk, that shadow self, I've done the work on her and that's what helps me to be able to consult with other people. That's what's going to help you with your finances, with your relationship, with your health and wellness, speaking your true self. <laughs> Can you be my therapist, please? I offer consultations on my website. That's what I do in the mornings, every morning, Monday through Friday. But I want you to get this in life. Because you know, after the children are out of the way, if you have any children, and if you still have a mother, once a child, I mean, a husband or a, a wife, once the children are gone, what's going to happen in that pivotal moment is you're going to be turning around to that person because children could occupy yourself. You're going to turn around and you're almost going to be like, who are you and who am I? 
See, the children could have you in all kind of games and activities and you'd be so much of a mom, so responsible and so busy taking care of their needs and doing everything for the house and, and the family and even in a relationship, you got to give to the relationship too. But then when you turn around and then you don't know who the heck you are and you never embraced you and, you all, and the, you, your old conversation was, yeah, because the children need da, da 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 and then you look in there in that empty house and there's no children no more and now you don't even know who you are. It's going to be a sad moment that you don't know who you are. You don't know how to find who you are. You know, some women lead their conversations like, oh, I'm a mom. And yeah, my oldest, he's he's 18. And, you know, he just got a scholarship. For da, 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 da. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah. And I like to da, 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 da. You know, with him, da, da da da, everything about him, and yeah, and oh, I'm married, yeah, and my husband, he's a da 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 da, but they don't never, they don't never say who they are. Who are you? What is the totality of you? What makes you happy? What makes you sad? Have you sat with yourself on your sad days? Or you don't like to be sad, and you just try to jump out of there and ignore sad, and you don't understand why sad keep coming to visit you. What kind of man do you like to be around if you're single? What kind of woman are you? You think you could embrace the totality of being feminine and, and fun all the time? Or are you one of those ladies who are balanced and can be feminine and fun? And yet you have your boundaries and you could just, you could wear, you know, your joggers and you could chill and you ain't gotta be have makeup on every day. And you could, and you can go, and you could garden and you can go to the amusement pay. What kind of woman or man are you? What makes you happy? What is your favorite book? What makes you sad? And when you get sad, why are you sad? Can you get yourself from sad? Are you an overachiever? Why are you overachieving? Was your mother like this? Or was your daddy not there? How did that affect you? What do you have in your closet? Did you clean up your closet or you still have stuff in there that you don't want anybody else to see? If me and you were alone in the room, would you want me to see what's in your closet? Or would you be ashamed of it? And if you are ashamed of it, why? If you're ashamed of it, why didn't you clean it? Why didn't you sit with yourself? Why didn't you heal yourself? Because you are the healer that you're looking for. Well, do you ask yourself these questions? Because the rabbit hole starts with you because you're the operant power. And these things that you have in that closet are signals that you're sending out that you probably don't realize. They're signals that you're sending out. Sending out. I got a lot of junk in my trunk is what you're sending out. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't know who I am is what you're sending out. Oh, I don't know what I want out of life is what you're sending out. Mm -hmm. I'm just wobbling all over the place is what you're sending out. Yeah, and so so you'll be the one that's in a relationship for 10, 15 years with the same place, person and you don't even know if you want him. Oh yeah, well, you know, he comes and goes, but you let him. Oh yeah, but he never really done anything for me, but you let him because you don't know. When you don't know who you are and what you want, you just let all kind of people just come in and just suck with you. But when you know who you are and what you want, not everybody can sit at your table. Because you know, oh, oh, I don't have a place for you. Oh, 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 no, no. I know myself and I know you don't belong here. I, I even know my partner because I know him or her by how he feels because I carry him and her in my heart. I know, I know. I wrote it down on a piece of paper. All the things or the qualities that he has, the feeling, the energy that he would have when I would feel him. Not what he looked like, not his six pack, not his physical. I ain't waste my time on a 0.01%. No, I went and I jumped into the 99.999% of all that, that he or she will be. Her essence, his demeanor, what he stands for, his communication skills, our chemistry, our connection. I know what that feels like, that I can recognize him without him saying a word but that's when you sat with yourself first though you it is so important for you to embrace the totality of your god within that person that you want everybody to perceive you as but that person that's in there that you don't want nobody to see who is that person who is that person do you know him? are you glad you know him? Or are you trying to hide him hey kid that's really, really important. It's really, really important. Are y'all in here? 
Y'all talking? Oh my God. Closed mouth don't give in. They don't. And so you get you get stumbled over. You get looked over because you don't know yourself. You get used. I've been single for way too long. I don't know what kind of man I like. Find out today. How how you expect your inner being to yield to you the desires of your heart when you don't even know what, what's going on in that heart? Figure that thing out today. Figure that. That's so important. It's so important to know thyself. We talk about health and wellness all the time, but you need to know yourself too on an energetic level, the totality of yourself. If somebody was to ask me about me, I know me because I went inside of me to get to know me. Remember that in the biblical text? Adam knew Eve. This one knew that person to know your essence, to know your core, to know your yin and your yang, and to know which one that you frequent more than the other. And it ain't nothing wrong. I ain't seen nothing wrong with the lady who wants to know her masculine and to know her independence, to know her. But to know her, she must also know that she cannot defy the law of polarity that says there must be male and there must be female principles. So if she plays the role of male, she knows that her, that's her role. That's okay. But she also has to understand that she shall attract a feminine man. Because she's already the masculine. That's knowing yourself. That's being okay with yourself. And if you don't like that part of yourself, you change that, that part of yourself. And get to know the feminine side of yourself if you want to attract masculine. Get to know you. That, that's all I'm saying. Get to know the totality of God and figure out which one is more fun for you in this right now time and space. And then you unlock that door. You unlock and pull out all of them skeletons that's up in there that's been waiting to just fall to the floor. That you have allowed to grow and you never went in and sorted out that nest before. Get to know yourself. Know your triggers. Yeah. Yeah, know your triggers. Know what turns you on and what does not. You got to know this. Don't wait till you're 50, 60 years old, 70, 80 years old doing a consultation with me and don't even know the game. Study to show thyself approved. These are still portals. They might not be the health and wellness portal, but there are other portals. Just like we go through the law, through the through the portal of, of astrology, one with conscious. There's a portal of quantum physics. There's a portal of the third eye. There's a portal of... of, of um, of mentalism, there's a portal of sexual seduction, there's a portal of, 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 of effective communication, there's a portal of blood type, there's a portal of melanin, there's all kind of portals, and all of this is just you just getting to know you, it don't matter what portal you go down, go down that portal and find out the ins and out of yourself, today, find out what you like. It's going to do, it's going to make all the difference for you. It's going to stop you from wilding and then wobbling and then you can finally walk on water. Without sinking in relationships. Without sinking as it pertains to health and wellness. Without sinking as it pertains to finances. You want to be rich? How much money are we talking about, rich? Know yourself. You you want to you wanna be financial free? How, how free are we talking about, you know? Know yourself. Well, where you gonna be free at? What state you gonna be free in? Know yourself. How does it feel? What does free feel like? Let's start with the feeling first. What does freedom feel like? What does health feel like? What a relationship feel like? That's 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 the beginning of it all. What does being easy feel like? What does be? What does it feel like to be back on your throne? Because you get in these situationships and these relationships and you lose yourself and then you say, you say, you say, I lost myself. How did you lose yourself? Because you didn't know yourself to begin with. I lost myself. I took myself off the pedestal of life and I just did for them and them and them. 
And so when relationships be over, you come and you want to consult because you feel <laughs> like you lost yourself. You didn't get anything. You were nice and you got your wet ass and your dry purse. And now, now all of a sudden you want to show the other side of you and be vengeous. <laughs> you will, you will she suffer. You want to do a spell on that person now. But had you been embodying the totality of God already, you wouldn't feel that way. You, you wouldn't need, you wouldn't be crying because you gave more than you received. Had you embodied your feminine side that you knew you wanted to receive something, you wouldn't have sat there and spent 15 years with somebody that was not giving nothing or sowing nothing into you because you would have, that would have been a red flag. Oh, um, I gotta go. I, um, you're talking about this here. You're talking about this here that you're going to give to me, but I ain't seen you give nothing to me. And um, you you wouldn't even be saying this here. You, you, because you feel worthy. You, you don't even answer them calls no more. Uh-uh, you ain't the one. Because the other ones, they, 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 they know. They know what they're dealing with. They got the signal that I'm worthy. And they, they're providing for me. And this is what I like over here. Ain't nothing wrong with liking this year over here to receive this year. Go toward what you like. And if you know who you are, you're not going to entertain that which you don't like. Because you know energetically, if I entertain this, I get more of this. And this is where I want to go. Because I know myself. Oftentimes when you see people on TikTok and they talking about, oh, he did this and he did that. He did that and he hurt me like that. They crying because they have wet ass, dry purse, and nothing to show for it. They got God because they didn't know they self. And they didn't play the game of life to win. They was out there and didn't know the game. Shame on you. <laughs> Shame on you. So that's the, the message. Embracing the totality of God. Whatever that means for you. I suggest you do it. In your relationships. Even for your little girl version of yourself. I do consultations with people who have an inner girl that, that they just left. They just left behind. And they wonder why the relationships are suffering in their physical reality. Because that little girl is crying out. She never been heard before. She's in the darkness and she wants to come to light. And so I teach them how to go within and get her and save her. And then the whole relationship dynamic changes for them. Everything changes because they put themselves back on the pedestal again and they begin to love on their self. It all starts with what's going on in here. No matter what we're talking about y'all, even with this health and wellness, Handle the manner. That's why I always say, hey, hey, you gotta, uh, you gotta make sure your habitual thoughts are up to par too. This is a mind thing. Hey, hey, let's do the mindfulness here. No matter what I teach you on whatever subject, you can manipulate energy in here. This is the, this is the powerful place in here. Start in here. Figure out what's going on in here. Deal with what's up in here. It's so important. It, 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 it ties my heart. <laughs> To hear the people that 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 haven't sat with themselves in all of these aspects of life, it really does. It really does. I love the fact that I can teach and share these different things with people, but it saddens my heart to know that there are people out there that don't even know what they want. Children grown and gone, and they still trying to figure out them because they never sat with them, and they're still getting used, still getting played. I had a neighbor; she was. Bless her soul. She's no longer here in the physical reality. She was such a good woman. Good wholesome country lady. Cooked all the time. So much so that her food, the aroma of her food, I would smell it every evening. Cooked daily. Only being nice. <laughs> being nice. And, and it seemed to me that this lady just suffered. Suffered with the niceness. Feeling worthy, y'all, is the key. Feeling worthy. Are you worthy? Do you know yourself? Are you following your heart? Are you in love with you? Do you know what loving you feel like? 
When you mad, you know how to make yourself happy? Hmm? When you go out, do you know how to make people come to you? Do, you? do you use your habitual thinking when you're out? When you're talking to your partner, do you say things in your habitual thinking like, oh, I know he loves me? Or are you doubting yourself? Or are you downplaying yourself? Or are you hard on yourself? Hmm? Are you ending the relationship up here, up here first before it could even end right here in the physical? Oh, he's not going to call. He never picks somebody like me. Are you doing that? Are you beating yourself up? You're the one I'm talking to. Stop that crap. Go in there and ask yourself, well, why am I talking about this here like this? It could turn out a better way. Why do I be so hard on myself? Why am I making all of these situations serious? Why aren't I playing the game? Why aren't I having fun? You could flip it up and play the game any which way you want to. Just make sure that you know yourself along the way. That's it. My mom is 74 and lost in a man who doesn't even see her. So sad. Yeah, because age don't matter. Mental, spiritual, emotional, physical, wellness is key. Yes. Oh, I love that. Because the age is, you know, it really don't matter. It really don't matter. They got older women that I consult with all the time too. And they still having these little young girl issues. Because they don't know who they are. But then they have older women that are getting married. And have men that are providing for them. Because they do. And what's the difference between the two? One feel worthy and one does not. One does not. They don't expect anything and so shall it be. They feel like they're not worthy for anything and so shall it be. They beat on themselves all the time. They not only judge themselves, but they judge their reflections and so shall it be. Learn how to manipulate energy. Learn what the game is. And for those of you that are listening to me, I highly suggest you, you look into the law of seduction. I highly suggest you, you look into um, the playing the game of life. Playing to win, to win um, mindfulness. I highly, I highly suggest you learn what game is and how women easily could get manipulated. How about you go down that portal? How about you study that? If you don't know it, if you didn't learn it in high school, learn it. So you'll know if you're getting played. So you know <laughs> when you are getting played. Because you don't want to sit there and get played. And then end up with a wet ass in a dry purse. And then now you're old. And you feel like your clock is ticking. When you should have been playing too. <laughs> when you should have been playing the game of life. When you should have been showing the totality of God that you are. Because you're not just one person. You are not. You can lie to other people. But I know that you are not. Because none of us are. The people in corporate America. The people that live on your neighborhood. The, your lover. Everybody is seeing a different version of you. The one that you want them to see. But you need to know all of them. You need to get comfortable with all of them. Of who you are. And find out who's going to be the main character. That's how you embrace the totality of who you are. Know what you come equipped with. You got to know yourself. You got to trust yourself. You got to listen to yourself. You got to be guided by yourself. You got to learn what flow is for yourself. You got to learn how, if you're a woman, you got to learn how to shut your mouth. Just shut up. Sometimes instead of over talking. So you'll know who you're dealing with. If you're a woman, you got you to gotta at least, even if you want to be a masculine woman, you got to at least know what feminine aspect is like. How does it feel to receive? What does it look like? Do I like it? Or am I uncomfortable with it? Do I get guarded and defensive thinking that he wants something from me or that he's gonna hurt me like the last time? And why do I feel hurt? Why do I get guarded? Oh, there's something in there. There's something in my closet that I haven't dealt with. Why am I still single? Hmm? Why have I never been married? Why am I intro an introverted person? Huh? Am I using my introvertedness as an excuse to get out there? Because I want to use that as an excuse so I don't get hurt. 
That's what we're doing? Because when we build this here wall, and I'm a healed introvert, I know how the game go. When we build this wall and we say we're introvert, yeah, we stopping. We stopping other people from coming in. But keep in mind, you're stopping your love from going out. So why are you stopping your love from going out? The wall stops both sides, the in and the out. So why are you stopping your love from going out, introvert? What's going on? You got a broken heart or something out there? Hmm? What's going on? You afraid of your love? Hmm? You don't want love no more? Well, what's really going on? Why are you stopping your flow? It's because when you stop this flow, here's the thing about getting the core of what I'm getting at here. When you stop your flow and you don't know yourself, guess what? You don't know love. Now, if you don't know love, guess what? You can't heal from that sickness. Because see, this love here, the love is the thing that's going to heal your body. Not that food, not that 0.01%. No, it's going to be the 99.99.9% of all that there is, which is the love of God. Love that heals all. So that means you don't know your love. That means you never experienced your love. You you think you experienced an love. Oh, it was their love. No, it was your idea to open up to the idea of love. Oh, it was their great sex. No, no, no. It was your idea to open up to the ability to have that great sex and to feel yourself in that particular way. It's you. Open up to you. Okay? Open up to you. Yeah, protective. Because you don't want to be hurt no more. We go through it, but don't you stay up in there, reflection. Get up out of there. And love again. If you single, if you single right now, and you up in the house by your lonesome sometimes, you have ample time to get to know yourself. You get you could you could get to know yourself in a sexual way. You could get to know yourself in a physical, mental, emotional, spiritual way. Because you ask yourself. What do I want? What do I like? Let me try this. Let me try to say this kind of man. Well, I may have him in the friend category, but let me see the good in him. And let's see. Let's see. Can 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 I really entertain him? You know that guy, because everybody, everybody that's single got that guy that, that's the friend. He really want to be with you, but you don't like him for some which reason. You like the other one that don't like you. But have you ever looked at this guy beyond his look or the thing that you don't like about him? And you ever sat down to see his wholesomeness, his good quality? Find out what it is because he has some. He has a lot of good ones. That's why you put him in the friend category. He have a lot of good ones. And so if you can't, if you find it hard to find out what you like about you, you find out what you like about that friend because he got some good in him. You find out why is it that he he is the one that you put in the friend category. And he's the only person that really can make you have this wholesome laugh. Oh, there you go. You didn't realize that you like laughter. You like somebody that could make you laugh now. You feel good about that. And so now you could add that to your, your list. And then you, you entertain that one that you want. And you set with yourself. And you set with yourself. The one that you want. Which are you tilting the scale right now? Because if you're a woman and you want him, it should be the other way. He should want you more. You go out with him and you pay attention to, to his his ways. His maybe his ego, maybe his 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 um inattentiveness to you, checking his cell phone while he with you, like, yeah, what you say, and you pay attention to the lack thereof or what you like about that. Or what you do like about that. But when you see something that you don't like about that thing. Because you're going to see it, especially if you're running behind him. Don't pay attention to the lie lies. Oh, he got these six abs. Pay attention to the things that you don't like. And you you, you, you listen to yourself. Why don't you like that? Oh, because he wasn't attentive. He's like a pretty boy. Oh, you think it's all about him. Oh, oh so that means you want it to be all about you. And so you sip and you sort. Your reflections are out there for you to be using them to find out more about you. Because they're only really showing you you. This, this here one here showing you you. The friend that you always wanted. 
the laughter that you really, really like in relationship. This one here is showing you, you too, the man that, that you running behind, that you, you giving a time of day, but he ain't really that into you, but you want him because maybe he got the money or maybe he got the six pack, but he's showing you, you, he's showing you the fact that you don't want to be ignored, that you want attention. He's showing you, you, life is always showing you, you. So you get, you collect the data from your reflections, from the experiences, from your reflection. Oh, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Collecting the data, collecting the data, collecting the data. Now you don't collect so much data that now you know yourself. I want a guy that's going to make me laugh and that I can be his really good friend. And I really need him to pay attention to me and put me you know, in the aspect of his life where he's attentive to me, that he'll take me out and he'll provide for me, but he'll make time for me. And he'll look to me as if I'm a gleam in his eyes. And I want him to respect himself too. And I want him to, you know, be about his business. But when it's our time, God darn it, to collectively, what I've got from this data is that I want my, my time. My time to shine, to be that feminine aspect. To be fun, to have fun with my partner, to laugh, and to be provided for. Yeah. And so, what do I have to do? So now I know what I want. What do I have to do? I okay. So that means for me, I can't be. I can't be no longer playing the role of the masculine, always trying to give. If I want somebody gonna give to me, I gotta learn now how to receive. I gotta learn how to effectively communicate and speak my the truth. Okay, I've never done that before, so I'm gonna have to get a little practice in doing that. Yeah, so how do I do that? How do I do that? Okay, since I'm, it's feminine aspects that we're talking about here, I have to go with my heart, because you know, feminine, feminine is nurturing, it's loving, it's from heart, and so I gotta begin to speak about how I feel. Yeah, I feel. And I wanna share all my good feelings, more good than bad, so I'm balancing the scale of how I feel. Now I'll talk about things that feel good. Oh, it feels nice to be on this day. Yeah. The lighting looks perfect. Oh, the food is so delicious. And I and, and, and because I'm attracting the opposite sex, see, simple things like this will take you so far in your feminine walk. And I just wanna share this with somebody, maybe anybody who, who might need this. And, and so I'm on a date and I know now how to receive and I know now I don't have to talk and do and be. All I have to do is just be still and flow and receive and talk about all of the beautiful things that feel good. Oh, the waitress was so nice. Thank you, sir. It was, it was real nice. Everything was just so delicious. And sit back and just wait for him to pay because I'm ready to receive. And just be, because this is what I know about me. This feels good to me. When you know you, you know everything that you want now. You ain't gotta be, well, I, well, I put, I took my card out because, you know, I don't know. You know, I ain't know if I had to pay, but no, it, it's, that's besides the point. I didn't know if he was the kind of guy that, you know, wanted me to pay 50, 50, forget what he like and forget what he know. You know you, you're the woman that, likes to receive so there ain't no need to pull out no card now because now you know you at least you have to you know at least he he he, he leaving you know then you have to take care of you that's when you're masculine come out but when you're in the presence of a gentle man which you're now attracting because now you know who you are what you are then you ain't gotta do the extra this is part of getting to know yourself yeah thank you for your insight hey isaac rising Good afternoon, my reflection, and have a wonderful day. You too, babe. I really, I'm hopeful that one of you all receive this message. Embody the totality of God. Get to know yourself. To know yourself is to know God. And you gotta know for your kingdom. You gotta know for your kingdom to come. If you put off knowing yourself in any aspect of life, you put it off, you rise into your higher self in that area of your life. And sometimes that area be relationships. It ain't always health and it ain't always consciousness. Sometimes it's relationships, sometimes it's finances. And I want you to master that part of yourself too. Master all of yourself, okay? I received this message. I wish I would have um, had someone like you to talk to 
when I was much younger. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Because I learned, I've always been a reader, a researcher. I learned by teaching myself. I will never forget when I was pregnant. And I had all these books about, you know, what to expect first, second, third trimester. I was just researching every day. Every, I would go to Barnes and Noble when I was younger <laughs> on weekends, you know, instead of going out to the club, I went to Barnes and Noble and whatever, whatever I was going through that week, I just read. Yeah. You too, Ms. Brenda. I would read and <laughs> oh, y'all too sick. Y'all wish I had somebody like me. Oh, thank you for that. I would read. I would read it, but when I was pregnant, I read about what pregnancy was supposed to be about, you know? When I you hear something, you know, that I was inquisitive about, I would read, you know? And I, I knew I was an introvert, so I read about being an introvert and why I'm like this. You know, I knew I liked to people watch, so I, I started reading and learning and studying body language. You know, I just read. I like birds, so I read about birds. <laughs> you know, if I want to know, I read because I understand that reading is fundamental and that I can learn from other people's life experiences and then I can apply it to myself. And another thing I want to tell you too, body language is so important in your feminine walk, in your feminine, you know, when you touch yourself, when you're touching yourself and a man is around maybe that you are interested in or he's interested in you, you know what the, the body language does? It, it, it makes them wonder if, I wonder if she saw, I wonder how she feels. That's what they're wondering. You could lure people over by the way that you touch you because it's all go back to how you love on you. You ain't gotta have all of this here out if you don't want to. Your spoken word can do it. The batting of your eyes, how you hold your champagne glass with that little pinky dangling, how you how you gracefully walk, walking slow, not walking too fast, how you are mysterious, how you know how to shut your butt up and let him talk. And men like to talk about themselves. All you gotta do on a date is be like so intrigued, re receiving and saying, Oh, really? Tell me more. Oh, you're such an interesting man. Tell you, tell me more. Now you're getting to know him. And you, you doing the interview now. You're getting to know him and to feel him, his essence. So you can now know on the first date, as soon as he opened his mouth, is he the familiar one that I carry with me? Or are we just going to have a good time tonight? And whether it is the one or the other, you sit there and you know and you learn how to receive because you know how to just be in and now and have a good time and enjoy the journey. You know, this is the one who greets me every morning. <laughs> yeah, my baby. <laughs> so get to know that. It's, it's really fun. It's really fun. I feel concentrations in the areas of mind, body, and soul. They're available on my website. Oh, oh, thank you, I see the email. Uh, please help, I got you Dawn, I got the email. They're available on my website if you are interested in it. I don't normally share this part of what I teach the women, when some of the women that consult with me with relationships, I don't normally share this side of me here to let other people know, but I, 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 I offer that as well. Because it's, the game of life is actually supposed to be fun. And you're actually supposed to be playing to win. And you're actually supposed to be embodying the totality of God. And that means you can participate in playing the game any which way you want to play the game. This is my bio. This is when you click on my picture at the top. When you go to my website, which is the link of my website in my bio, the sort of the if you need a consultation in the areas of body, body, mind, soul, whatever the situation may be, you open up my website, you scroll down, you see a picture of me. Right underneath the picture of me, there are pictures that scroll in a fall, a, across. Consultations is one of them. And that's me right there. That's how you book a consultation with me. I offer mentorship for young ladies, you know, relationship, vivid dreams, health and wellness, um, mentalism. <clears throat> You name it, interpreting dreams, manifestation, meditation practices, you name it, I do it. 
because I've already got to know myself. I've already sat with myself and been through the ins and outs of all of these things. And they matter. They matter. You know, we might have a signal that is really, really high in one area of our life. But in another era of our life, it'll be a weak signal. And that's because we never dealt with that part. Like you might be able to manifest money really, really easy. But relationship might struggle. Or relationships easy, but finances might struggle. Nobody is exempt from not having that um, the thing called pain or a thing called setback or that thing called a delay or that thing called resistance, right? And so what I come in and do is help you release the resistance by maneuvering in whichever way you want to. That's, that could be looking through that person in relationships as through the eyes of God and manipulating the energy to have him yield to you and be that person because you can do that. That's what your mind can do. It might be easier for you to release the resistance and block that person and choose another target, so to speak, to start afresh with, right? It might even be easier for you to sit with that person and not see them as the, through the eyes of God and use them by using them with your shadow self and showing them your darkness, your other side. There ain't nothing wrong with any of these approaches. Nothing. But every last one of them gonna allow you to see the fullness of you and what your mind is capable of doing. There's a season for all things under the sun. God's wrath comes upon us all. It rains on the just as well as the unjust. God gives life to all and God takes away life to all. So in the meantime, in between time, it is so important for you to know all the aspects of the God force that's inside of you. Okay? The familiar one that I carry with me, that's exactly how I know. There you go. It's the familiar one. And then you bump one day into that familiar one. <laughs> and you just know. And you don't know from a place of trauma because you know yourself. You don't know from a place of hurt and wishing, oh, this is, has to be the one. You know, when we're young, we, we, you know, in your dating world, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, this is it. But you don't know yourself just yet. No, it can't be it and you don't know you. you. <laughs> I'm talking about getting to know when you know you. That's the one you want to meet. Because you don't want to meet other people when you don't know you just yet because you're going to meet a person who don't know them. <laughs> you gonna always meet who you are. So if you don't know you, you gonna meet. I don't know me either. When you broken, you gonna meet. Mister, I'm broken too. When you cheating on yourself, you gonna meet. The man that cheat on you. When you feeling unworthy, you gonna meet. The narc who's looking for somebody who ain't worthy. When you sitting up there being in your masculine, you gonna meet. The man who you think is a B-I-T-C-H. <laughs> Because that's what you're attracting energetically. This is why it's so wholesome, wholesomely good to know who you are. All right. All right. Embody, embrace the totality of your God self. That was the message. Any questions before I get up out of here? <laughs> Y'all being quiet today. Y'all being so quiet. Any questions? QB, any questions? Thank you for the likes. Thank you for your likes. I want y'all to get this. Every area of your life, I want you to get it. No questions? Thank y'all for joining me today. Thank y'all for joining and being here as I talk about embracing the totality of God. It was different. Not today. I appreciate your knowledge and insight. It's been a wonderful today. God, God, I'm happy. I'm happy y'all was listening. It's something different from what I talk about. I normally talk about health and wellness, but this this is part of your health and wellness too, baby. It was so deep. I think we're all in awe. Yeah, because I flipped it up on y'all. I can't. Eh? <laughs> Thank you so much. I want you to get to know you. Because to know you is to know God. Grateful you're still here. Oh, y'all was listening. Y'all still up in here. I'm so happy about that. Y'all do that part of the work, too. I want y'all to be bad, Mama Jammers. I always say, man, I, I wish I had a daughter because she, she'd be jazzy. She'd be jazzy. she have this thing figured out. Jazzy. Thank you for your time. You are so welcome. She'd be so jazzy because I've been told her the game, man. 
I'm being told her the game. The ins and outs of the game. Thank you again for your wisdom and insight. Thank you, Miss Brenda. Okay. So y'all know I offer consultations if you ever need to reach me. If y'all have um any more questions about this, maybe on my next live tomorrow, you can ask or whatever. Off and on, multitasking. Oh, okay. Yeah, you always multitasking over there. Okay. This video. I love your spirit. Thank you so much. This video was from my heart to yours. Get to know yourself. Put yourself back on the pedestal. Know your ins and outs. Know your darkness and your light. Know your darkness. Your darkness. Your darkness. It's important too. Your darkness and your light. Okay? Your darkness and your light. And your light. You not just light. You darkness too. <laughs> All right, babe. Be blessed. Bye.